Hello students. In the previous session, I have explained Holozoic nutrition and its steps and also the different modes of procuring food by different organisms and how the process takes place of nutrition in amoeba. Now I will start today with human digestive system. So now we will start human digestive system. Now you can see on the screen there is human digestive system. Now uh, in human, the food, what the, the mode of nutrition in human is holozoic. Same, it is holozoic. The food ingested through the mouth, the food ingested means intake of food is from mouth and then it passes through a number of organs in the body. This constitute the alimentary canal and this is known as alimentary canal or digestive tract means a long tube which starts from mouth and ends at the to the anus it starts from mouth and ends to the anus this is known as alimentary canal or digestive tract now we will go for the alimentary canal now what is alimentary canal now which is from mouth the long canal long tube like structure which starts from mouth to to the anus now the human digestive system it consists of the alimentary canal along with the digestive glands the alimentary canal along with the digestive glands and this is known as digestive system of human beings what is known as uh, digestive system the alimentary canal along with the digestive gland is called digestive system. Now in the human, digestive system consists of the following organs. Following organs. Number one is mouth. Number one is mouth. Number two, esophagus. What is esophagus? Esophagus is also known as food pipe which connect the mouth with the stomach, esophagus, pipe, which pipe? Food pipe. Then after food pipe or esophagus, the third is stomach, third is stomach. After stomach, small intestine, then large intestine, then anus. So these are the organs of alimentary canal. What is alimentary canal, do you remember? From mouth to anus there's a long tube like structure which is from mouth to anus that is alimentary canal and alimentary canal along with the digestive glands it forms the digestive system and what are the main organs of alimentary canal they are the six mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine anus now you can see there are three main digestive glands also. These are the glands which always help in the digestion of food. Which always help in the digestion of food. Salivary gland which are present in where? In the mouth only. That's why the digestion always start from the mouth. Then second is pancreas and third is liver. Now we will go step by step means i will start from mouth the first organ of alimentary canal is mouth now the mouth contains what does the mouth contain we all know inside the mouth tongue is present teeth and salivary glands are present when we eat food when we intake food when food is taken into the mouth then what will happen the tongue jaws and teeth all work together to grind the food. They all work together to grind the food. Now, digestion of food always starts from the mouth. While chewing, when you start chewing the food, then you can feel 
a watery liquid substance which is secreted in your mouth that is known as saliva that is known as saliva which is secreted by salivary gland which is secreted by salivary gland and here the partial digestion of food started how the saliva helps in the digestion of food because the enzyme amylase is present in saliva which breaks down starch into sugar which breaks down starch into sugar and saliva also lubricates the food and that's why it makes it easier to swallow down to gulp down so first organ is mouth which consists of salivary gland teeth and tongue now we will go for the teeth okay before teeth i will discuss one um, activity with you you can see here to study the effect of saliva on starch uh, you can try at your home also if you will take a piece of chapati or you will take rice without curry or dal and just chew for a minute and then chew for a minute after few after one minute or sec few seconds you will feel it becomes sweet in taste it becomes sweet in taste because whatever starch is present there will convert into sugar with the help of amylase enzyme which is present in saliva so here you can see one activity is there first we will take two test tubes and we will name them one a test tube and b test tube in test tube a put some teaspoon full of boiled rice and in test tube b we will put a teaspoon full of chewed boiled rice mean once we will chew the rice and then we will put in the test tube b now after that you will add a little amount of water in both the test tube and then we will drop two drops of iodine solution in each of the test tubes now what we will observe after that we will observe the boiled rice in test tube a will turn blue black in color because the uh, because uh, uh, there is starch present and starch is always turn into blue black color when iodine is added because iodine solution turn starch into blue black color so the boiled rice which is present in tube a it will turn into blue black color but the rice which is the chewed rice and present in test tube b will not change any color will not turn into blue black why because while chewing what will happen the saliva will mix with the rice and then that saliva will broke down the starch which is present in the rice into sugar how because in saliva what is present amylase enzyme is present will which will turn um starch into sugar so that is how we can do this activity and then we can check the effect of saliva on starch then we can check you can see it's clearly in the diagram in one there is boiled rice in second there is a chewed rice in boiled rice when we add then in both the test tubes we have added few a am little amount of water then we have put two drops of iodine solution in tube a then two drops of iodine solution in tube b later on what we observe that the tube a the boiled rice will convert change its color into blue black color because why because the starch is changed into blue black color with the help of iodine solution but chewed boiled rice because already it is chewed the saliva is mixed and the starch is changed into sugar that's why there is no reaction of iodine solution in that so that is the effect of saliva on starch now we will go for the next that is teeth salivary gland is present then teeth 
are present. Now, what are teeth? We all know teeth are hard structures which are present in the, which are held in the sockets of the jaws. Now, what is the function of teeth? It helps in cutting of the food, in chewing of the food, and break the food particles into small pieces. Now, there are two sets of teeth in our lifetime. One is temporary teeth or milk teeth. And second is permanent teeth. Temporary teeth or milk teeth. Milk teeth are 20 in number. These teeth develop in a child and they fall off between the ages of six and eight years. And then after that teeth will come, they will be known as permanent then they will be known as permanent teeth. Now, what are permanent teeth? They, uh, there are 32 teeth in all. 32 teeth in all. 16 in each jaw. And these teeth may last throughout the life. Or sometimes it falls off during old age. They are the permanent teeth. So, the temporary or milk teeth were? 20 in number and permanent teeth are 32 in number, 16 in each jaw. Now there are four types of teeth in our mouth, four types of teeth. These are called incisors, canines, premolars and molars. What are they? Incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Incisors are the front one, the front four. They are the incisors. You can see in the, uh, you can see in the diagram also, incisors are eight, the front one. Now you can see the, the uh, how they look like, the shape of incisor, canine, premolar, and molar. Now there is one table given there, the number of teeth in humans, types of teeth. When there are milk teeth, same incisors are eight, permanent incisors are eight. Then canines, in temporary, they are four in number, in permanent also they are four in number. But in the temporary or milk teeth, premolars are not there, but in permanent teeth, eight are there. Molars, 8 in milk teeth, during milk teeth or temporary teeth and permanent 12. That's why you can see in total, in temporary teeth are 20 in numbers and permanent teeth are 32 in numbers. And how many types of teeth are there? Four types of teeth. Incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Now we will go to what are incisors. These are the eight front teeth, four on the upper jaw and four in the lower jaw. These are flat in shape and they are always helping us for cutting and biting of food. We always cut the food or bite the food with the help of incisor. Now second is canine. If you can feel, you can put your hands, you can feel there are um, Two, uh, one either side of the incisor in each jaw. So they will be total in four. Two upper, two lower. These are very sharp and pointed because they help in tearing of the food. Then next is premolars. These are two on each side of the each jaw and their surface is flat and they always help to food to crush and grind the food. And the last one is molars. These are the last three teeth on both the sides, in both the jaws. They are also flat and the same. They make the grinding more effective. So these are the four types of teeth. Incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Now you can see the one uh, topic is there and one diagram is also there that is tooth decay. It is always said you brush your teeth twice, one in the morning and one at night before going to bed. Why? Because whatever food particles are there in your teeth, later on they always uh, stick there 
and they, the bacteria grow there, harmful bacteria start growing there and then they make a cavity. Then they make a cavity and then the bacteria break down the sugar and release acids and these acids, they make a hole in the tooth and that is known as cavity and that is known as cavity. How the food cavity is there? Simple. When the food particles, they remain stuck between your teeth, then the bacteria break down sugar in the uh, uh, food and then re they release acids. And these acids make a hole in the tooth, which is called cavity. This is called tooth decay. Now inside the mouth, one was salivary gland and second was teeth. Now tongue. Tongue is the organ which is used for taste. Whatever food we eat, now we, we, we say that today food is very tasty, today salt is less, today salt is very much. So how? How can we know? Because in the tongue, there are taste buds. There are four types of taste buds. Sweet, sour, bitter and salty. There are four types of taste buds which are present in our tongue which help us to know which type of taste we are having in the food. It also helps in rolling and pushing the food into the pharynx and from there it goes to the food pipe. It mixes the saliva with the food and one more thing it's very important the tongue also help us in speaking. Tongue also help us in speaking. Now the next part. Once the food enter, we take in food in the mouth and after chewing and after saliva mixes, the MLIs change the starch into sugar. Then that food, when we gulp down, it moves towards the food pipe known as esophagus. Known as esophagus. Now, what is esophagus or what is a food pipe? It is a connecting tube between the mouth and the stomach. Means it is a connecting portion, connecting tube, which connects the mouth from the stomach to the stomach and is called food pipe or esophagus. And it is 20 centimeter in length. It acts as the passage for food. The food can pass from mouth to the stomach with the help of food pipe. How? The food is pushed down towards the stomach by a series of the movement of muscles of food pipe. That is a contraction and relaxation. It, the, it contract, then it relax. It contract, then it relax. That contraction and relaxation of the muscles of the food pipe it helps the food to push down towards the stomach. And this rhythmic movement is called peristaltic movement. It is known as peristaltic movement. Now, what is peristaltic movement? Simple. The food is pushed down towards the stomach by a series of contraction and relaxation movement of the muscles of the food. And this rhythmic movement is called peristaltic movement. That is how the food from the mouth reach to the stomach. So this is all about, so today we have taken the three parts. One is the two parts. One is mouth, then food pipe. And that again, I want to show the diagram. That is a very important diagram and you can practice this diagram at home in your rough pages. That is the digestive system of human being. Now for today, I think it is enough. So once more, you have to revise this properly. And I hope you all are able to understand properly. So this is time to say bye. Have a nice day. Bye.